Welcome to Crunch Time, a program dedicated to helping you survive the crunch times in your life, whether they are caused by accidents, natural disasters, poverty, economic recession, depression, or all-out economic collapse, or whether they are caused by your realization that today's food supply is being contaminated by artificial fertilizers, pesticides, and genetically modified organisms and over-processing of crops into what can hardly be called food. We want to help you through the crunch times in your future by teaching you what we have learned about organic gardening, food storage, and food preparation. We'll bring you into our kitchen and into our garden and share with you what we have learned, hopefully, before your crunch times arrive. Now here is Chef Francois. Well, there's one bunny loose. There was two. But caught one of them. Here. Anyway, I've got the the uh, rabbit tractor up a little bit. So they can get out. They can get back in too. So I'm going to let her run around by herself and see if she gets back in later. I fed these guys a bunch of pellets in here and I hope she gets in there and gets some of them. Got water everywhere. Yeah, there's too much water in there. I'm going to have to drain some out. Because when it freezes tonight, I don't want All right. to We delivered, well, they took delivery of the last four bunnies that uh, were pets. The two that Ruby had, a white fluffy one and a black and white fluffy one. And the two uh, dwarf, black dwarfs, which were in with that cage over there. And they wanted one more. So they ended up taking a New Zealand for $15. I wish I could have got that one that was loose. It's still loose. But Tyler's over here are too young to take. So look at that. Nice little litter of nine. Two grays, a bunch of blacks, and two whites. So Tyler's got, and they're starting to eat too, so I'm going to have to either put a bigger feeder in there or move her to a different cage because there's going to be way too much feeding in there. Alright, little dwarf over here is, maybe I could take that cage. Just swap cages, or not cage, but feeder. I'll decide that later. Alright, it's going to be fairly warm the next few days, so I'm leaving this uncovered. Hopefully it'll thaw out without getting all mush. And let me see. Chickens. There's only one, I think, that's been laying eggs. Oh. Over here where we had six. I changed it from the uh, wooden nesting box to this cardboard nesting box because they had it soaked with pee and everything. And uh, they were all, uh, most of them were out this morning. One of them was way over here in the corner, frozen solid. And the rest of them are still alive. So there's five good ones in there, but we lost one last night. Got down to zero degrees. These in here, not even covered with hay, and they're doing good, and there's only three of them. But when one gets out of the box, and she doesn't have anybody to huddle with, that's what happens. My redneck rabbit is doing good. And the white one that's loose is probably under... 
this trailer. Let's see if I can see her. No, I don't see her. Or him. There he is. Hi there, little buddy. <laughs> so anyway, I just gave him some more rutabagas. A bunch of dirt on it. Hopefully they'll eat them and thaw out the dirt and the dirt will go through and get on the ground. So there's only four in the cage, one outside, and one sold. I've made the hay easier to get at so they can have plenty of hay. And well I had two loose bunnies this morning. I had one last night, so one of them must have got out through the hole in the bottom. But I've caught them both. Got them both in there. They're getting bigger, so maybe they'll have a harder time getting out. You've got one hiding way up there in a the box. Three there, one over here with mama. And uh, I think I'm gonna lower this end a little bit. Maybe make the hay a little easier to get at. Uh, let's go over here like this. And drop that down a little bit. Everybody else has been watered. Okay, even though there's some hay laying on the bottom that's already been ruined, I poke some through the wire cage there so that it's easier for the rabbits to get at without ruining it. They've got apples to eat. They've got rutabaga stems yet. Some rutabagas once the once the uh, dirt falls apart. They've got corn stalks to eat. I don't think I'm going to give them pellets right now. But they're doing fine. Well, I was checking the nests with the bunnies in it. And once again, this one here that had a baby out here yesterday and frozen had another dead one. It was in there cuddled with the rest of them, but stiff and cold and not moving. The four that are in there, still okay, I guess. Maybe I should have left the nesting box in like I did this girl a little longer. Maybe they'd have a little bit more warmth from the mother. She can't really get in there very good. I'm going to try to put that nesting box back in, I think. Let's see. What size cage is that? I don't know if this one will fit or not. This should fit. I'm going to transfer them back again. Okay, I've taken the little babies out of this nesting box. Put them back in a wooden nesting box. Hopefully, that mother will go in there and take care of them. Get in there, sweetie. Hopefully, there'll be enough room for her to get in there and Keep it warm. Alright. 
These guys are doing fine. They're sitting in their feed box. You guys are not going to be able to eat if you keep sitting in there. Okay, I've got the hay basket full. I've got some sticking out through the door between the wires and on both ends of the door. And uh, bunnies are interested. I've got it fluffed out enough in there so if it's damp it'll at least dry. And uh, they got so much to eat in here now. They certainly don't need pellets. Oh. Bunny down here likes to eat the grass that's growing around the edge of the building. Seems to be the greenest. He only went inside of here. I put him in here the other day in the banana plantation and I rolled up this side over here and the chickens got in and scratched up a whole bunch. Ruined a little bit of the grass that the rabbit could have eaten. Alright, I'm not going to go that way. My limper is struggling there, so... Bye bye, sweetie. I should check the eggs too before I leave. May seem like winter's over. Inside, with 86 degree weather inside the banana plantation and mud in any low spot and sweating. No hat, no coat. But, uh, come outside. And winter is full on. It's barely above freezing today. Got barely below freezing last night. But this is after two weeks of negative zero weather. I just blew all the snow off the day before yesterday. We had three inches or so on top of the greenhouse. We got plenty of winter out here, but on a clear day, we get summer like weather inside. All right, today is the 23rd of December, two days before Christmas. We've got Ruby here with all her bunnies gone. We've got Bucky, the male. Over here, I just put that nesting box back in yesterday to replace the cardboard one because the little ones were getting out and I see all four of them outside huddling together I don't know if they can get back in or not I don't see any eyes open so this is a uh, twin one and of course there's our buck called Michael Moore. And here's twin two. And she's got her three littles. Little ones down in this nesting box here and their eyes are open. And they're moving around just fine. So I haven't seen them out of the box. So these ones over here I think I should put back in the box. I went to put the bunnies right in, well, when I opened the door, actually, the mother went and jumped right in the nesting box. So I put them in behind her. Hopefully she doesn't step on them. So anyway, these guys over here are doing just fine. They're moving around with their eyes open. They were born a few days earlier, a day before the other ones anyway. And over here we have Redneck Rabbit. How you doing, honey? How you doing? I'm gonna give you some water. I already gave you plenty of food. All right, the rabbit tractor over here is containing four bunnies just fine. 
the fifth one still likes to go over there and well, she likes to roam the whole place actually. Well, these guys are eating. Might get them some rutabagas. And this is what we've got right now. When those are all gone, I've got three bins over there that have already frozen, so I don't know how long they're going to last. But let's get these greens to them while they're still. All right, it's 10.15 in the morning on December 23rd. And it is hot in here. I just checked the thermometer inside the banana plantation. It was up to 89 degrees already. It's 86 now, but it was up to 89. Leaving the door open for a while while I uh, tour around. I gave the uh, rabbits some shade because a lot of them were huffing and puffing. These guys over here are nice and comfortable for sure. These things here will thaw out today probably. That'd be good. I noticed uh, over here where I fed the rabbits, I gave them a whole ear of corn with uh, with the uh, the shuck still on it I just tossed it in there and you can see right there where they've got a few shucks still left but the rest of the, the rest of it is gone it is totally eaten so corn something good to give them I guess I don't want to give them too often because there's too much sugar in it but if it's going to be cold it would be good to give it to them gave them plenty of rutabagas this morning that's plenty enough to last all day and maybe all night gave them a little bit of pellets that I scraped up from under the feeder there and up there and I also threw a rutabaga with the leaves down here for the, the loose bunny there he is over by the side and the rutabagas were right out here well you can still see the rutabaga it's still got some still got some left he chewed some of it off there. But uh, a few leaves here and there. And he doesn't want me to go near him. Probably a male. These things will eventually thaw out and just be mush. A lot of them are already. But all I can do. Maybe take some out and try to feed the rabbits again now that they're thawed. Maybe I'll take this yellow one right here. Take this one, put it in the rabbit cage. See if they're interested in eating it at all. You guys have some of that. Pretty much all their hay's gone, so I think I'm gonna fill that back up now. Here's my limper. One of my hens is limping, don't know why. Alright, where did I have those? I thought they were underneath somewhere. I'll put it right there for now. Anyway, what was I just going to do? Oh, also today, see this 55-gallon drum over here? Connor wanted to sell me a bunch of rabbit feed mixed with oats. Let's 
So I bought rabbit feed and oats. The rabbit feed's going fairly quickly. That bucket over there is basically one one whole bag in here. And uh, since I got rid of some of the bunnies, it's been going a little slower. But about a week is all it took to get rid of that. Now that I've got those bunnies out in the rabbit tractor, the other bunnies gone. Um, bunny down there is eating that rutabaga again. Um, anyway, it's going a little slower, so this may last me a month. Cost 30 bucks. There's basically, I don't know, uh, 20 gallons of it. 55 gallon drum, and it, it went up to about there, just over a third um, when it was full. We put it into the bags. All right. Let's see what else I got to do. Oh, hay. I was going to give the rabbit some hay. That's right. I've given all these guys hay, but I haven't given the rabbit tractor hay. And there's a bunch that needs to be put in because that hay cage is just about empty. Well, the rabbit that's been loose for almost a week, I found today. Well... I've seen her every day, usually over there somewhere. But today, while I was feeding these rabbits over here, I saw her sitting right here next to the hay bale. It's a nice warm place. So I just picked her up, petted her, and put her in with the rest of them over here. So now they're all back together. You guys want some pellets, don't ya? Guess what? You gotta eat your other stuff first. I've given them three cobs of corn in the last three days. And uh, they're not eating the cobs, but they're eating the corn. I thought the first one, which was over there, they were eating everything, but I guess not. Tried to put pumpkins in there again, but they're not doing anything with those either. I suppose if I put this in there, they'll probably eat it. This came from under Tyler's cage. see what they do with that. Might not eat it because it's too moist. So anyway, all right, I fed all the rabbits. Now I gotta make sure they got enough water. And then check on the chickens. Well, let's check on the little bunnies over here in Tyler's cage. Looks like they're all over by the water, or by the feeder, most of them. A couple of them out back. You guys all like it in here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got everybody. They're all having fun eating. You guys over here started their nap already. Two of them are still eating, but all the other ones are going up onto the balcony. coming back down.
must have had plenty to eat. They got all kinds of rutabaga still sitting there. They're not touching, so I'm going to say they've eaten plenty. This guy right here is looking for a way out still, though. I'd like to catch and see what gender he is. Either he or she. Coat's not as, quite as white as the others. So I can tell my car like that. Well, I threw out some rutabaga for the rabbit that's out here, and the chickens ate it. So, here's the rabbit over here, sleeping in the corner. I'm not going to go all the way over there because he's he's resting. I don't want to bother him. But it's nice and warm in here. 10 degrees outside this morning, and 81 inside this greenhouse here, speaking of which. That little guy finally found his way into the greenhouse, the banana plantation. I made a place for him over here that I could funnel him into. And I stuck him in there once and he just jumped right back out. But now he's, he was in there this morning. Some more rutabagas I threw out here for him, and the chickens gobbled it. If he's not going to eat it, might as well throw it in the other place. <laughs> Rabbit tractor, they've been fed a bunch of rutabagas. And uh, I did put a little bit of pellets here for the guy that's caught outside, but he's not eating it. And the uh, chickens were stepping on it. Maybe I'll put it inside now. Let these guys have it. Here guys, here's some pellets for you. I think it's enough it's a I share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ. According to the Bible in Romans 3.23, all of us are sinners, and we do not measure up to God's perfection. Romans 6.23 says, The penalty of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, Jesus came to earth as a man to pay the price for the sins of mankind. Romans 10.13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, saved from the penalty of eternal death. The payment Jesus made for our sins is only available to those who believe and trust and his fulfillment of God's promise to save the world from their sins. If you want to take part of the resurrection of life, you must believe and accept the gift of eternal life that Jesus has provided. Or you could reject the gift and take part in the resurrection of damnation unto eternal death. God loves you and has provided a means of eternal life if you will believe and accept the gift. I have accepted, and my life has been changed, as the Bible tells us it would. I'd like you to consider joining me and all of God's disciples in eternal life. If you want more information, you can email me at crunchtime at roadrunner.com. Until next week, God bless you and yours, and we'll see you again on Crunch Time with Chef Francois.